In this entry, we'll be taking a look at Ben Solo, otherwise known as Kylo Ren from the Star Wars sequel trilogy. A rageful and destructive yet internally conflicted villain, Kylo Ren's tragedy was his search for acceptance, which led him down the path of the dark side before his eventual redemption back into the light. This path began with his position at birth. Being a descendant with the mighty Skywalker blood, Ben Solo was naturally someone whom the forces of light and darkness would contend over. Ben himself recognizes this in his youth when he gripes that both Skywalker and Snoke have dehumanized him by seeing him as just a legacy. To quote Ben from the rise of Kylo Ren in his speech to Ty, he says, Choice? I have no choice, and I never did. Even my name isn't a choice. The dark side and the light both claim me from the moment I was born. Do you know how that feels? This eventually reached a point where Ben developed a hatred for his own name, with Ben being derived from Luke's legendary mentor, Obi-Wan, and Solo from Han's last name. But as we have seen in the Solo standalone film, the name Solo was just something that an Imperial officer conjured up on the spot. Ben may not have known this, but he does know that Solo is not his father's real name, something which he gripes about. Even from childhood, Ben was under the concealed influence of Palpatine through Snoke, at an even younger age than Vader was in his youth. To make things worse, both of Ben's parents were mostly absent, with Han going off on his own adventurous pursuits, while Leia was busy with her political career. The absence of Han and Leia cannot be overstated in its role in leading Ben to the dark side. It left a vacuum that Snoke or Palpatine was able to exploit. In the latter part of The Force Awakens, Ben tells Rey that Han Solo would have disappointed her as a father figure. Perhaps that would likely have been true, given Ben's experience with Han in his childhood. Given what we see of Ben, that he is a very emotional person even as an adult, it's unlikely that such a personality would be received well by an ultra-masculine type like that of Han in his younger years. This would explain Ben's closer affinity with his mother than his father, which results in him being unable to eliminate her when the time came. With Han, there is some turmoil too, but far less. Beyond this parental resentment, the spark that would ignite his evil would come during his stint at Luke's new Jedi Academy. On the outset, Ben's training as a Jedi is already on the wrong starting foot. For starters, he is too old and already has emotional baggage to begin with. In the time of the Republic, Jedi younglings were inducted at a younger age before they had the chance to form family attachments or develop any outlying emotions. This was for the reason that any uncontrolled emotion would be a potential avenue into the dark side, with the prime example of this being Vader himself. Given that Ben Solo started his training when he already had some bitterness against his parents, we can conclude that he was already quite well into his childhood. Of course, we can't fault Luke too much for this, given that this practice of inducting younglings has been lost since the fall of the Republic. Luke himself was trained despite Yoda's objection to his age, and so was Leia as well. But the fact remains that Ben was already predisposed to the dark side. As in the classic words of Yoda, fear leads to anger, anger leads to hate, hate to suffering. This resentment became a breeding ground for the deception of Snoke to thrive over the years. Given his parentage, Ben was naturally an exceptional apprentice who quickly became the Jedi Temple's prize student, which became a source of friction with the other students. The pivotal point for young Ben would come when Luke was able to sense Snoke's evil influence over him. Tragically, instead of helping his nephew through his darkness, Luke makes the colossal mistake of attempting to eliminate him in his sleep. This act devastated Ben and accelerated his spiral into the dark side. It bears noting that Luke wasn't just his master, but his uncle as well. Given how close Luke was to his parents, it's probable that Ben assumed that he couldn't trust any of them. Luke's mistake cost Ben his faith, 
not only in the Jedi, but in his family as well. To put it simply, everyone who has held legitimate authority over him has turned out to be a disappointment or a threat. With nowhere left to go, Ben would seek out Snoke, the only person left in the galaxy who appears to value him. Within a short span of time, Ben's descent into the dark side is quickly seen by the cold-blooded killing of his rival Jedi student who is seeking retribution for the destruction of their temple. But given that Luke was the one who drew first blood, it's not surprising that Ben would feel that his actions were reasonable. This path eventually led him to clash with the Knights of Ren, with Ben defeating their leader in combat and taking his place. Given that the Knights wear a mask as part of their uniform, it is here that Ben adopts the headgear that becomes central to his character. Ben's transformation also results in another stark change, namely the color and style of his lightsaber. By pouring his rage into his formerly blue kyber crystal, he changes it to a shade of red. It's also been said that the exhaust ports on the cross guards serve as outlets to release excess energy, perhaps a symbolic representation of his overflowing anger. Now going by the name of Kylo Ren, he joined the First Order under Snoke as its supreme leader. But beyond his status as a Knight of Ren, Ben's choice to wear the mask also stems from his idolizing of his grandfather, the second most feared man in the galaxy in his time. On the outset, the mask serves to hide Ben's face and distort his voice, both of which are reminders of the parentage he is trying to shed. In a twist of logic, Ben sees the turning of Vader back to the light side as a mistake and vows to finish what he started, the complete subjugation of the galaxy and the final destruction of the Jedi Order. But despite the idolizing of Vader, Ben proves to be a far less effective leader than his grandfather. No doubt he is younger and less experienced due to his incomplete training, but this also arises from the character flaws stemming from his immaturity, mainly seen in the uncontrolled expression of his rage. Ben's temper tantrums are synonymous with his character, and beyond the sizable equipment damage they have caused, they also have denied him of the respect of his subordinates. Perhaps his tantrums have also deprived the First Order of several victories over the years as well. In the attack on the Resistance base, we see this play out twice. In his resentment against his father, he projects it onto his ship, the Millennium Falcon, and diverts all the TIE fighters to it. This unwise diversion of resources gave the Resistance a chance to extend their low chances of survival. Later, in his hatred against Luke, he stops his army's advancement against the Resistance base, and in a moment of overkill, he puts to waste what appears to be several thousand rounds of ammunition to appease his anger. The Resistance could have been wiped out there and then, but Ben's distraction with Luke cost them that decisive victory. In light of all this, perhaps the pinnacle of Ben's failure as a leader is seen by the decision of General Hux to defect to the Resistance merely out of spite for him. In his quest to delve deeper into the dark side, Ben faces one conundrum holding him back, the remembrance of his family. This would culminate in another pivotal moment in his life, his act of patricide and the murder of Han Solo. In a reversal of fate, this act of patricide becomes the start of his turn back to the light side. In the words of Snoke, killing Han split his spirit to the bone with its immediate effect being seen by how he lost to an untrained ray in a lightsaber duel. Sure, he was wounded prior to that, but Han's death only served to intensify the inner turmoil within him, which had an adverse effect on his combative skills. This loss to Rey triggers the next step of his redemption, namely the disapproval of Snoke towards him. After Snoke ridicules him for his shortcomings, labels his mask as ridiculous, and tells him he's no Vader, Ben realizes that he has effectively traded a disappointing father figure in Han for an abusive one in Snoke. Such is the magnitude of Ben's resentment that once again he wears his emotions on his sleeve, 
blatantly showing his aggressive intent against his master before being shut down by a jolt of force lightning. Along the way, Ben would find a kindred spirit in Ray, his equivalent in the light side and perhaps the only person who has truly empathized with him due to their similarities. Both are estranged from their parents in some manner and both have had to fight to survive as the people who were supposed to take care of them chose to toss them aside. After losing faith in Snoke as his master, Ben turns on him and eliminates him to take his place, a desire which further emphasizes the Sith rule of two. In his arrogance, Snoke doesn't see it coming and mistakes Ben's resolve to kill him as a determination to kill Rey instead. But it's notable that after being burned by both sides, Ben has had enough of the Jedi and the Sith, and in his own words, he wants to let the past die. This can be said to be the tragedy of Ben Solo, that he has to swing to both ends in his search for acceptance and yet still be rejected. But beyond that, this alternating allegiance highlights the unstable and fickle mind of Ben, and perhaps nothing highlights this better than his choice to don the helmet but destroy it later, only to fix it and wear it back again. However, Ben's goal of conquest remains, and with the resurgence of Palpatine, for a time it appeared that Ben was somewhat intrigued by the sheer might of the Final Order. But access to that power would come at a price, the death of Rey to serve as the final nail in the coffin for the Jedi Order. It is at this juncture that Ben reaches a crossroad, and it is here that the final pieces of his redemption come into play. Specifically, they comprise a combination of the following. One, his romantic attachment to Rey. Two, the passing away of his mother, Leia. And three, Rey's act of mercy in saving his life after his close brush with death. Given his affinity to Rey, both romantically and through their connection by the Force, it's hardly surprising that Ben would choose her over Palpatine especially given the fact that Snoke and Palpatine are effectively the same person who shattered his faith in the Sith in the first place. If that wasn't already enough motivation, Ben owes her his life after she spares him by healing his wound. As for the death of Leia, it was a final attempt to reach out to her wayward son, one that cost her her last breath. Not many acts can better demonstrate the extent of a parent's love than the act of forgiveness, especially after such an egregious act as the murder of a father by a son. Perhaps this act of reconciliation restored Ben's faith in his parents, not just for Leia, but interestingly for Han as well. Han has been dead for some time now, yet Leia's act was sufficient to change Ben's opinion of him although no new information has been uncovered concerning his father. And speaking to a figment of his imagination, Ben replays the fateful conversation he had with Han before his death, this time reaffirming him as his father by calling him dad. This affirmation concludes his turning back into the light side, culminating in his redemptive act of transferring his life force to Rey to save her. In closing, what makes Ben Solo a villain? He was a boy born into the legacy of a long-standing conflict between two opposing factions, a child who sought validation from his parents, who after finding none, became the unfortunate victim of a Jedi Master's pessimism. From there, his journey took him to the dark side, leading him to commit heinous acts in the attempt to declare Ben Solo as dead. But similar to his grandfather, he eventually turned back to the light with a final redemptive act that cost him his life. So what do you think of Kylo Ren from the Star Wars sequels, folks? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and take care.